Hey, how's it going everybody? Today I wanted to make a quick tutorial on how to run Jupyter Notebooks on a remote cluster. So from time to time I want to do some interactive data analysis on a remote cluster, rather on my local machine, because the remote cluster can often handle larger data sets. So in order to run a Jupyter Notebook on the cluster, we're going to have to follow a few different steps. First of all, we're going to have to log into the remote cluster. Second, we're going to create and activate a virtual environment that's capable of running Jupyter Notebooks. Then we're going to use a QLogin command in order to perform some interactive computing on one of the compute nodes within the cluster. And then finally, we're going to run our Jupyter Notebook from the cluster. I'm just going to um, SSH into my remote cluster. So there we go. Um, it's my username and the cluster that I'm logging into. I'm going to run that and it's going to prompt me for a password. So I'm going to type that in real quick. And voila, we are into the remote cluster. All right, so for our purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and make a test directory. And I'm just going to call this. Um, See, make dir, and we'll just call this Jupyter uh, tutorial. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cd into the directory I just created. And then if we list, there's nothing there, obviously. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and load up um, an installation of Anaconda. So I can do this by doing. Um, module load anaconda 4.7.10 and if we do that now anaconda should be loaded now you'll have to check on your server to see what um, installation that you have of anaconda if you have them at all and you might have to contact your system administrator to install that for you um, but you can always check which modules are available by just doing the uh, module um, not list, we want module avail uh, command. So you can see here that we have a few various versions of uh, Anaconda. Okay, so now that that's loaded up, um, I'm just gonna try to go ahead and run uh, Jupyter Notebook. And as you can see with this installation of Anaconda, the Jupyter Notebook command is not found. Um, so this gets into the point where we're going to need to make a virtual environment um, that has an installation of uh, uh, Jupyter. So before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and do this command called uh, qlogin. And this is going to take us off. Right now we're on the head node of the server, and this is going to put us on one of the compute nodes. In general, system administrators will get kind of mad if you try to run too computationally expensive. Uh, things on the head node rather than the compute node. The compute nodes are more uh, dedicated for larger jobs. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, QLogin. And I didn't uh, specify a memory uh, requirement, so it's defaulted to 4 gigs, which should be actually plenty for what we're about to do. Um, okay, so now that we've uh, uh, logged into one of the compute nodes, now it's time to create our virtual environment. So in order to do this, we're going to type in the following command. So we're going to say conda create dash n, and then we're going to name our environment. So the dash n flag is to name the environment. So we'll call this, um, let's call it Jupyter env for environment. And uh, we also have to specify what version of Python that we want to use. So let's uh, do Python equals uh, 3.7 and then we end the command with anaconda. Okay, so we're going to run that and uh, this should take a while, but basically this is going to um, load up um, anaconda for you and it's going to prompt you whether or not you want to install all these different packages. So you'll type Y for yes and then hit return and it's going to kick off um, installing uh, this version of um, anaconda in the virtual environment. Alright, so now that we have created our virtual environment, we need to go ahead and activate it. 
So to do this, we're going to type the following command. We're going to say conda activate, and we called our virtual environment Jupyter underscore env. And it helps if you can spell. So Jupyter env. So now you can see that after you type it correctly, now we're working within the Jupyter environment. Okay, so now what we need to do is actually um, open a Jupyter notebook. So to do this, we're gonna type in Jupyter notebook, and then we're gonna specify the flag no-browser, then we're gonna say IP equals 127.0.0.1 and then we're also going to specify a port number. So here we're going to say port equals to 8890. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And then rather than defaulting to bringing this up in a browser like a typical Jupyter Notebook does, um, it's going to actually just give you these um, URLs that you can type and paste, uh, type or paste into a browser. So I'm going to bring up um, an instance of Chrome, and I'm going to go ahead and type that URL, and you see that I get this error message saying that the site can't be reached. So what I need to do now is actually um, open up another terminal um, on my local. So here we go, got another terminal up here. And what we're going to do is actually type um, the following command. So we need the SSH, um, and then we're gonna do dash capital N, dash lowercase f, dash capital L. And then we're gonna say localhost is 8890. And then we need to change it here too. And then you will specify your username and um, uh, the address of the cluster that you're trying to connect to. So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate um, that line. It's going to prompt me for a password that I'm going to type in right now. OK, so that didn't look too exciting. But now we've actually ported in. Um, to the remote cluster, and now we should actually be able to run this Jupyter Notebook. So once again, I'm gonna highlight this and copy and paste it into a browser. And boom, now we actually have a Jupyter Notebook up and running. So let's go ahead and open up um, an instance of Python 3, and just to convince you that we are actually running this Jupyter Notebook on the cluster. I'm going to go ahead and import um, OS, and I'm just going to make a dummy directory by typing os.makedir, and then I'm just going to call this um, hello cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that cell, and now I'm going to hop back over and I'm going to shut down the Jupyter Notebook. So I'm just going to do uh, Control C, and then I'm going to say yes, I want to shut down the notebook. Sorry, let me try that again. OK, so now the notebook is shut down. I'm going to go ahead and clear my terminal. And now I'm just going to do a print. Uh, sorry, I'm going to do an ls command. And as you can see, the directory that we made in the Jupyter um, notebook, the hello cluster, is right here along with our Jupyter notebook on the remote cluster. So there you go. That's basically um, all there is to running a Jupyter notebook on our remote server. Um, I found this to be like a valuable uh, way of doing data analysis. Historically, I've just kind of downloaded all my process data to my local and then run further data analysis on it. But this is a way that you can do um, uh, more interactive computing with uh, 
uh, larger data sets. And I found it to be a valuable way of doing analysis. Um, it gets kind of cumbersome to have to copy things down to your local every time that you want to run something. Um, so I hope that you like this tutorial and I hope that uh, this will be valuable in your own um, uh, research and coding. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and click like below and I hope to uh, give you some more useful videos in the future.